some church mother to announce to everybody that you've really finally prayed through. And I'll tell you, some folks, it just don't happen that way. Some people's just stuck in traffic at a red light on Main Street and the Holy Ghost blows on that seed that's in their heart. And without them reading off a card or repeating a prayer or even getting on their knees, they're born to the Spirit of God. I love, I love every facet and form and phase of ministry, but I'm telling you right now, a track can't make you alive. Repeating prayers can't make you alive. That stuff just man's attempts to do it. 
But if you can't come to God no way except the Spirit draws you, there has to be a breathing on that life that's down in there. And I'll tell you another thing, while I'm at it, it don't come on you. It comes up from on the inside of you. You can't get nobody born again by praying something down on them. My God, they used to do that. They'd rock you, beat you, pat you, trying to get you to something to come on you. I want you to know this going at it from the wrong direction. It's not a coming on you. It's a coming up. Spring up all well within my soul. Hallelujah. It's a life inside you that's been hid. All that corruption. It suppressed it. Had it buckled down. But my God, you're nobody. Isaac and Abraham. That if you get the dust out of the well, the water will come up again. You know. Isaac didn't go hunt a new piece of ground and start digging from the surface. He just removed the debris and the dust that was in the well. And what happened? The well started springing up. The well started coming up. All you got to do is stay stop the flow. It'll come. Can you say praise the Lord? I'll worship it one more time. Hallelujah. Worship it. Worship it. Worship it. Worship it because he's holy. Worship it because he's worthy. Worse than because you're one with him. Worse than because he didn't come here to talk him into loving you. But he loved you unconditionally before you ever entered into this room. Worship him not because you brought gifts to lay of earthly treasures at his feet. But because he's a spirit. And they that worship him must worship him in the spirit and in the truth. Tune in to that heavenly song that's being sung inside of you right now. And let the let the voice of redemption come up out of your spirit. I'm redeemed. I'm redeemed. I'm not going to be. I am. I'm bought with a price. Oh, hallelujah. I didn't come here tonight to try to talk God into blessing me. I come in here blessed. I didn't come in here tonight. Get on my knees up there and try to persuade God to pour His Spirit out in this earth. I've got His Spirit. You've got His Spirit. He ain't going to pour it out, but He is going to let it flow. Hallelujah through the body, through the body, through the body, there's an anointing that sets the captive free. And you say, man, I've got a river of life flowing high out of me. Hallelujah. Sing it. It makes a lane to walk. And I'm Prison door sets the captain completely. <laughs>
poverty. I'm not in dieting sickness. I'm not in dieting. Oh, praise the Lord. But I'm in dieting goodness tonight. Praise the Lord. I'll tell you, glory, lift your hands, beloved. Lift your hands, beloved. Lift your hands and praise Him. Worship Him. Come on, open up your spirit. Talk to God for about 30 seconds in your heavenly tongue. Lord, I stand on the Lord. Me garam the stool of my knees. Rebe stiki la from on the locust and an eye of a bangs and eat the alabogini. Rosco stone and an eye of a bang and see the atorable stone of an eye. And he la basha franco to yet in a piece to eat the andala badada badanda. Nagarando coasted in a mondo the most in the alabogini. Rica city. Rica city. Robon Snade the Alabangan Zita Brande Magaban Zadana Labronste Lega Labans de Bibi Pistini Nini Ando Rosto Logo Bonje the Baraban Zete Alabangan Zuri the Atabanaya Ha Rako Sora Bati Libranda Labangan Zora Basta Tananaya Labangan Didi the Ata O Mamma 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 Mondo Oh yes, oh yes Oh yes, oh yes, oh yes, oh yes. You don't think the Lord has a pause button on that gift of the Holy Ghost, do you? You got him any time you want him. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. I know some of you don't think you can do it until you're shook up by the shoulders and about to weep your eyeballs out, but I got a gift that's freely given unto me. And the Bible said, building up yourselves on your most holy faith, praying in the what? The Holy Ghost. Praying in the Holy Ghost. What am I doing? I'm touching another realm. I'm touching another realm. I'm touching another realm. Every time I enter in to my heavenly language, and I talk to my Father in a realm that this earth cannot articulate, I'm being instantly translated, being instantly lifted up into that glory what we were singing about hallelujah being lifted right out of this right out of this praise the lord hallelujah 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 i've loaded up my team of oxen i've loaded up all of my donkeys saith the lord i've laid some good things on those burden bearers saith god and i've brought them into your midst this night saith the lord for i shall open up unto you i shall open up my gifts unto you i shall open up your eyes yes, saith the lord yes, yes, and i shall yes. peel back those ears and let you hear things that you haven't heard for I shall bring you out of the dulls, Bill, saith the Lord. I shall bring you out of this dust realm, saith the Lord. And I shall lift you up into a height, into a place that you have not been before. For it is me that has opened up a door to you this night. I unload of my caravan silver and gold, yea, precious, precious stones, pearls of great Christ, for I give you of myself, saith the Lord. I give you endurance. I give you steadfastness. I give you faithfulness. I give you patience. I give you faith. And I give you healing this night. These are my virtues. These are a part of my great caravan. These are a part of my good, saith the Lord. For they are good things. They are wonderful things. And I share it with you. This night, Lord. Hallelujah, worship him. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Welcome you to this meeting and everything God has in store for you tonight. Amen. So thankful that everybody is not gone on this weekend. I'm glad some of us stayed behind. So we can have this meeting tonight. Amen. But I, I'm wishing a good trip on everybody that is gone. And abundance of rest and fun and everything else. We'll, have, we'll all just have to have our fun tomorrow. Amen. But anyway, we're in a round tonight. Can you sense that already? They just they no no teeth to pull here. It's just a flow of the Spirit of God. Amen. Why don't you just yield everything you've got over to that? 
all your problems and tolls and efforts and all that, just go ahead and cast them over to that flowing stream. Let the river take them away. Glory to God. Let the river take them away. Hallelujah. We want, <coughs> want to just bless every one of you. We want to say a hello and a welcome to our sister over here. I believe, Debbie, you said your name. We welcome you to this service. Now, so good to have you here. Amen. Just thanking God. We've been hearing good word. We were over at Sunshine Friday night. And then some of the church was over Saturday. And then we got in here today and just flowed. And I feel that good rest. We're with his cause and we're in a rest tonight. The Holy Ghost rest. Amen. And I believe that the Lord God won't have to start out with stammering lips. He'll just go ahead and speak to us tonight in a new tongue. Amen. Give us the full load. Amen. Hallelujah. And so with that said, it's time for us to become a part of this service tonight by blessing the woman of God with an offering, with an abundant offering. I want the double portion offering tonight. One hand in two pockets. Amen. Get the double portion ready. And I just want the Lord to let Sister Janet and Brother Michael go back home with just enough to pay everything up and then live them in their house on the rest of it. Amen. That's the Bible way, isn't it? Go sell that and pay you, and pay everything up. That's always what you do when you get back from a trip. When you're traveling preacher, you get back, the first thing you do is pay everything up, get everything paid up. And that, that, Amen. And when you get done with that, it's time to be able to reach over there in that mill bar and it still be running over. Amen. I don't want to reach in an empty mill bar another day in my life. I want every mill bar I reach in to be running over with a full supply of God. Don't you feel that way? The way to make it happen is don't hoard that mill bar. Keep pouring out of it. And the more you keep pouring out of it, the more God will keep putting back in it until it's an absolutely unfailing, infallible supply of His great measure. Hallelujah. Pressed down, shaking together, running over. He said He's able to make all grace abound toward me that I have an all sufficiency and all things may abound unto every good work. Glory to God. So we just loose you with your gifts in the name of the Lord to come and bless the ministry and the work of God in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Bring it to the Lord. Get ready to go back. 
And I'll tell you, that's really my life. So I love it. <laughs> Absolutely. And I, I know that in Him dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead body. And everything that we need, if we'll look within, that's where it is. Hallelujah. There was a woman who had just a little bit of oil. She had given up on life. She had lost all her joy.
without a shadow of a doubt, in the middle of the night, in the early mornings when nobody's around, you don't have to start getting on the phone to call somebody else. You learn to pull from the den. The best secret you'll ever find is to learn to look within and pull from within. And I love you today and I love each one of you. Bless you. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. You, you know what? We've come so many miles away from the mindset we used to walk in, haven't we? Oh, yeah, because you never, never, never trusted what was in you. You were always having to seek something outside of you. And I'm glad that the Lord didn't write a new Bible or produce a new book to teach us, but He gave us information and revelation on what had been there for years. And the same words that come out of the prophet's mouth were the same things they were desiring to look into, what came out of their own mouth. And the Bible said they couldn't even see into their own prophecies. But he said, blessed are our eyes and our ears. We've been chosen to see what they couldn't see. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. You don't have to run a blessing down by God. You don't even have to run healing down. Healing is a flow. All you got to do is remove any interruption to that flow. If you got to, you know, people that have circulation problems, they, they, they remove that, whatever, that clot or that blockage. And guess what? Them toes will get, get red again and bright again. All that black and that purple will leave. Why? Because the flow got down to them. Well, it's the same way with anything you want from the Lord. You just let the Word take the blockages away and life will flow out to every part of your being tonight. Hello. And don't you believe it? Don't you know it's so? Don't you know it's the way to live and not die? and declare the works of the Lord? What is? Let the river flow. <laughs> oh, I feel it flowing. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Happy we are to be in His house. I was glad when they said, I'm not talking about this building either. I'm talking about come together with people of like faith, like-mindedness. It's a beautiful thing to watch the oil run down beard and on off the skirt of his garment. Amen. Well, we're going to turn, they said turn them loose. That's what we're going to turn them loose. My granddad used to say, he thought they wondered if they had them in a cage. When they used to say, we're going to turn the preacher loose. Amen. But we're going to turn it over to Sister Janet and glad Michael's here. Praise the Lord. We don't get And I was happy to see it. Amen. And uh, you want to say something, Michael? Hallelujah. You come right on. And then, and then bring your wife on. When you done, I'll get out of the way. All right. You introduced the good night. <laughs> get in trouble with the pastor. I, I do appreciate I don't get to come a lot because of my job, and I do appreciate getting to come. And You know, it's funny. It's just I've been thinking about this the last two times I came to I haven't been able to come in a long time, you know, but then I see my family here and it's just like we haven't seen it like it's been a week, you know. Yeah. It's, it's really funny to just picture out of it. The church is beautiful. I haven't got to see the church since it's been redone, but, but I am blessed to be here. Amen. Just blessed to be in this atmosphere. It's so good to hear, you know, the words of life. Yeah. Uh, Pastor Matt was saying, and it's true, we come to church and and we think the altars are, to, are for us to come down here and fall over after we've heard a message of condemnation and we're down here squalling over how sorry we are. And, and um, I was thinking about how uh, a young man at work that I'll go by where he works, several hundred people work where I do, but he'll stop me and, can I ask you something? And I'll talk to him. And, and I told him, he was saying, uh, I'm, I'm born again. I know I'm born again, but I just I'm not right with God. And he go to name of two or three things that he's doing wrong yeah. and everything. And I said, brother, you was born again. Is you yeah, gonna get? You, I mean, you can't get it. 
more born again. And he kind of, you know how people will do, they'll kind of tilt their head. And, he's, and now this is the Holy Ghost. I want you to go look to who's helping you, not me. The Holy Ghost. Yeah. And he he told me after a time or two of things like this happening, and, and I want to say that because I want to give God the glory, but he said, you know, every time that I talk to him like that, it's, it just picks him up. Yeah. He, he, it's basically like he's, he goes to church, but it's basically not, he's not getting good news like that. Right. No. Obviously because, you know, I, and now it's sad that the church is to that point that it keeps sure. us oppressed yeah. and it keeps us under Amen. bondage and it keeps us under law, but right. we're not realizing that we're under now the, the spirit of grace. Yeah, yeah. And that we are already, now are we? Yes. Yes. Now, yes. now, yes. now. Yes. What, what does now mean? That means right now. Yes. And we're not waiting on something we are now, are we? Right. And I think another scripture said that, you know, that we are complete in Him. Yes. As Pastor was saying, we're trying to get something all the time. Yes. Right. But the Bible says we've already got it. You are complete. Now, if you're complete, I mean, if you're doing a project, I've done a lot of remodeling and things over the years, and, and, and I always enjoy seeing the things you've done and the upholstery you do. It's just amazing what God brings out that you don't know is in you. But, but when you're not done and you still got loose sprays and material hanging, you're not complete with it yet. But when you're done, you say it's complete. That means, well, I'm, I'm finished with it and it's ready for you. And when we come into this mindset, you will stop going around with your head down. You'll stop feeling sorry like you're just some old sinner saved by grace. You will pick your head up and realize yes. that you're fit for the master oh, who's man on me. Just go on. Yeah. Just go on out of here and be the church. Yes. Amen. Right. And you won't wait till the next service that you got to get bumped up again because you, you realize it through divine revelation. You know, another thing I thought when you were singing and ministering a while ago, where it says that Jesus said, I have many things to tell you, but you can't handle them. It's just going to be a little more meat than you can bite off. That's right. But when the Holy Spirit comes, He's just revealing life oh, behind yes. And that is what is going yes. on. And many of you experience that taste that, that He's just bringing more and more to you. Oh, right on the line and bringing to you as you can, can perceive it and realize it. Yes. It's just a blessing yes. that we're under this, this kind of anointing that's in this house. Oh, and with that said, uh, Janet, I, I don't think she needs any introduction. I don't know if everybody here that hasn't heard her, but this is our hometown gal. Yeah. <laughs> Amen. Yeah. And, uh, we're just blessed and uh, just feel so privileged to be here and uh, have this time to come. Amen. Amen. Yes. Um, Somebody say, turn the volume down. <laughs> Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lord have mercy. You know the power's flowing in here tonight, ain't it? Yeah. I like it, don't you? Yeah. I mean, you know, it'll just, it'll just flow anytime you want it to. Ain't you glad you learned that? Yes. Y'all, something's going to happen up in here tonight. It's going to be real. It's already started. It's already bubbling up on the inside of you right now. My God, what a revelation that we've all gotten that we ain't got to go out yonder somewhere and get it. I think it was Rodney Howard Brown that used to say, you know, you, uh, your, prayer, your prayer don't have to get past your belly button. Because out of your belly flows rivers of living water. Can you say Amen. amen. Out of your belly flows rivers of living water. Hallelujah. Out of your belly, your innermost being flows rivers of living water. Hallelujah. You have the life of God in you. And you are the life of God in the earth. You're the answer. Brother Michael just said it. He's being the answer to somebody who's asking questions. Hallelujah. And the Spirit of the Lord God is upon us because He has anointed us to preach the gospel to the poor, to bind up the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives. Hallelujah. To give recovery of sight to the blind, to set at liberty them that are bruised, and to preach the acceptable year, the year of Jubilee. 
the year of the favor of our God. Come on, say amen. Jubilee is not an event. Jubilee is a person. And his name is Jesus. And he's living on the inside of us tonight. So every day is Jubilee in the life of the believer. Come on, say amen. You're not waiting for the Jewish feast to come in. You've already got a feast on the inside of you. You live in a feast all the time. Somebody shout hallelujah. The feast of Pentecost just wasn't today. Do you understand? Y'all ain't got a chance. No, it's not just today. Yes, I know that today we're celebrating that in representation of it. But every day is Pentecost. Every day is celebration. Every day is a day of joy and celebration. Come on, say amen. Hallelujah. Why? Because Jesus cried, it is finished. And we are complete in Him. Glory be to God, who is the head of all principalities and powers. So if He is head and He is Lord in my life, then I am, I have head and lordship over principalities and powers and rulers of darkness in this world. Come on, say amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The principalities and powers, they're at work in the world system, in this world system that's out around us on the outside. But Jesus is Lord on the inside. Come on, say amen. Greater is he who is in us than he who is in the world. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. As he is so are we in this earth, in this world system, we begin to impact. We begin to dominate. Hallelujah. We begin to rule and reign as kings and priests unto God in this earth. Somebody lift up your hand and shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. When you stood up and you began to say some things, the Lord told me to tell you this. He told me to tell you that He is switching some things for you. I need somebody to praise God right there. There's an exchange and there's a switch of things. There's a switch of things in your life. There's a switch of things. There's a switch of things. There's a switch of things of what your hand is going to be doing. Somebody lift your hand and praise God. Let me prophesy to my man right here. Didn't have no intention of that, but it came on me when he stood up and began to speak the word of the Lord. But the Lord said he's switching some things up. And he said, go with the flow of what he's switching you over to. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Don't be afraid to let go of what you're already currently in. And just let it go and go with the flow of God because God is making the switch. God is flipping the switch. Somebody say, God is flipping the switch. God is flipping the switch. God said, don't think about being concerned about turning loose for what the future may be because God already has a future and an expectation of where he is about to lead you and where he is about to lead us in this journey of destiny that he has for our lives. Hallelujah. You know what? You ought to just receive that for yourself, that God is switching some things in the path of life for you. Hallelujah. Because David said, Thou will show me the path of life, that in thy presence is fullness of joy. Hallelujah. And at thy right hand are pleasures forevermore. And not one day in the life of the believer should be spent on anything that is not the joy of the Lord and the pleasure of the right hand of God. Y'all better hear me. 
You know, I really hear the Spirit of the Lord saying that everything about us, everything externally and fleshly about us is going to experience the same freedom that our spirit man, that our spirit man has been experiencing for so long. Lord, have mercy. For now, the Lord is that spirit. And where the spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. It means there's total emancipation from all bondage. Bondage from within, bondage from without. Bondage from within and bondage from without. Some of y'all getting set free from stuff right now that's been on you since your childhood. No, your spirit's not bound, but there's some things that wanted to just hang on and residue and attachment and connection. But I tell you, the spirit of the Lord is breaking those things right. Somebody got to reach your hand and shout at God with a voice of triumph because God is breaking you loose. God is setting some things free from you externally. You're free internally, but there's some external things God's delivering you from. And I hear the Lord say it's time to celebrate that freedom tonight like they did in the day of Nehemiah after the walls of Jerusalem had been rebuilt and they stood up on that day and he said this is not a day of sorrow this is not a day to hang your head down and be sad but this is the day which the Lord has made let us rejoice and be glad in it he said celebrate this truthfully because as of today Jerusalem you are free 
one and the redeemed of the Lord shall return and come with Satan. <laughs> Jerusalem, they said, they said, Messiah said, how? How can we sing those songs of deliverance? When we're still carried away captive in Babylonia.
feeling right now. But you ain't feeling the breakthrough like others are feeling right now. And the Lord said, there's been like a vice around your neck. There's been like a vice around your head. But he said, the anointing is here to destroy that thing. And break that thing. Take that yoke off your neck. Ha, 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 ha. And put a yoke of fatness on your neck tonight. And so whoever you are, get up here right now. Get up here right now. Hallelujah. Don't let me come get you because I show me. I know who you are. And you need to get up here right now. In the name of Jesus. God wants to break that thing off of you. He wants to break it off. Because God wants you to be free to rejoice in Him. Like you see others do.
That man of yours is getting ready to be delivered. Deliverance is coming to your house. Y'all better lift your hands and say, yes, Lord. Deliverance is coming to your house. Deliverance is coming to your house. I heard the Lord say it's not too late and deliverance is coming to him. Yeah, uh -huh. The Lord said he's, he's walked a mighty fine thin line at times. But God said he's going to cross over the, the line of grace and come in, my Lord. To the hour of deliverance in his life. And I'm on my baba bash on the lobo sand and a bakata. In an araba shit in me on the lobo send and a bakara and a yasura. In Jesus' name, for this is the moment, this is the day, this is the time of real jubilee celebration and freedom and deliverance day. It's D day, not Doomsday, but deliverance day over your house. Deliverance day. Somebody lift your hands and glorify the Lord. Glorify the Lord. Lord, give him a good blessing tonight. Step on, wait on out there in the pool. Wait, wait on out. Wait on out in the pool. Lord, give him a double portion. <laughs> Let double joy. Let double blessing. <laughs>
glory comes in the room. Um, all the details of this but I really see a turnaround and a restoration in your sisters and your family I don't, man there's something deep God's getting ready to do to bring and this is all I'm going to say the Lord said he said he's bringing all the body parts back together to be one family in the kingdom of God, the Lord said, like some of them just scattered. They're just scattered. They're just scattered. I'm talking about spiritually. They're just scattered. They just often just crazy places. But the Lord said, I'm bringing them back. I'm bringing them back. Full circle. I'm bringing them back into the place. Because I'm telling you right now. There is a generational blessing and anointing on your family that God is ready to release that he's not been able to release due to the scatteredness and even the division, the division, a spirit of division. But the Lord said, I'm bringing that back and I'm bringing it back together as one mind, one accord, one family, one purpose, one divine destiny, the Lord says. Strongholds are being broken. I'm telling you now, some of them that have been bound with things for years. I mean, for years they've had these strongholds in their lives. But God says, I'm delivering them one by one. They'll be delivered and they'll come in and come full circle back into my house and begin to do and, and fulfill the purpose and the destiny that I had ordained for them before the foundations of the world, saith the Spirit of the Lord. And I don't want to put all the business out there, but there's even been a time for years that it's almost like a separation. You had to separate yourself. Separate yourself. But, uh, but the Lord said, in that time of separation from them, you were separated unto me. And he said, now I'll use you to go back and bring them back in. And bring them a real, oh Lord Jesus. God's about to show you strategy. God's about to give you a plan. God's even about to give you dreams and visions in the night concerning this if he hasn't already. Because God says, I have a plan. I have a family plan for them. A family plan. There's a family plan. Michael has insurance through the company that he works for. And he didn't just put his own self on the plate. Right. Right. I'm on the plate. Yeah. Yeah. Caitlin's on the plate. Yeah. Yeah. You understand? Because yeah. it's a family plan. Right. Yeah. Right. And everything God has done in your life and is doing and will continue to do, He's wanting to do on your whole family. Right. And you're going to see Him do it. Right. Right. This is the time for it. No, oh, you're going to get some phone calls. You're going to get some phone calls. So be sure to answer them when you see the number. Be sure to answer them. Because the word of the Lord is going to be in your mouth. And the anointing is going to go through the phone line. Somebody lift your hand and say, we agree. And we say, it is so in Jesus' name. Hey! Hey yourself! Hey yourself! Hey yourself, mighty man of God! Hey yourself! Prophetic voice! Jesus, 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 Jesus. I just heard the Lord say that there is no expiration date on the prophecies that He's given you. No expiration date. So therefore, you need to know whew, that it's still in good. It's still in good standing. It's still in good timing. And am I saying God is synchronizing some things right now? He's putting some things in His order and in His timing to bring about Kairos moments for you and your family. Good God Almighty, my goodness. Designated moments are about to hit you. Significant designated moments. Kairos moments of opportunity. My goodness, they're about to hit you and your house and your family. Then get a ha 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 ha. 
for the water that you have poured out on others through prophetic utterance is getting ready to not only to splash back on you, but the Lord says to saturate you, to saturate you and your house, saith the Spirit of the Lord. For the Lord says, I will satiate the soul of the priest. The soul of the priest. So even as the priest in the house of the Lord, as a priest in your own house, God is satiating, meaning saturating. You're the soul of the priest with fatness. Oh my goodness. Fatness, abundance, and overflow that will pour down through you. Onto those who are around you, who are in your covenant, in your sphere, and realm of influence, saith the Spirit of the Lord. Somebody lift your hands and begin to glorify God. I tell you, the power of the Lord is in this place. Hallelujah. We know it. We are not like Jacob. We did not know it. We know it. It is. Yeah, it is. Yeah, it is. Yeah, it is. Yeah, it is. A yes and an amen. A yes and an amen. A yes and an amen unto you. Shaman de la basura. De la maloco, sing me. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Do it, Lord. That's right. That's right. Yeah, the river's flowing. The stream is flowing. And the mouth's flowing. Hallelujah. Just another moment and I'm done. But just say, kaboom, da kasa. Let the river flow to you right now. Just let it begin to overtake you. Just let it start spilling over. Hallelujah. I see it want to spill over out of you. Shanamana mo de wa. Shabona nena ba kasa nena ba sete. Ra kando lo bo son de lo bo kushen nena ba sata. Just let it spill over. Just let it spill over. Just let it spill. 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 Let it in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Lift up your hand. The Lord said, release this on you. He said, get ready for more than you've ever had before. Okay. Y'all ain't gonna shout about that? Get ready for more than you've ever had before. You ain't seen nothing yet. You ain't seen anything yet. You ain't seen anything as to the abundance that's about to hit your life. You ain't seen any. I mean, it's already in the flow. And the flow, the, the current is moving in your, your direction. Glory to God. The Lord said, get ready to have more than you've ever had before. Easier than you've ever gotten it. Make cut, come on, shot, dead, hit, sick, come on, na 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 na
on by. And I even brought sinners in this place. Some even came in in drunken state and laid money on the altar. God said they're about to walk through these doors again and bring money. Y'all better hear what the prophet is saying. I'm, I'm telling you, I'm on it tonight. They're about to come in here with some money. And some of y'all's fixing to come in here with some money too. Beyond what you've already been doing. Because, hey, hey, wealth is in your jubilee. Wealth and increase. Abundance and increase. <laughs> y'all better pray. I just seen God fatten people's wallets. No, I'm still at the glory here. Who you wallet out? The Lord said, hold it up and watch it grow. You got to see it around with the Spirit. Hold your wallet up. Amen? It can represent your checkbook or if you got a checkbook, hold it up. Watch it. The Lord said, give your wallet. So just hold it up because that wallet represents a lot of things. Most of your bank accounts are represented right in that wallet because you got debit cards right in them wallets. You ought to stand up and hold up your wallet and declare my wallet is flat. Fat, not flat. Fat. Y'all see me hold my husband's wallet. Because I know if his wallet's fat, so will mine be. <laughs> I grab your husband's wallet sometimes and say, baby.
Jesus' name. I sure do receive it. Because that's where it's coming from. What a glory in this world. Hallelujah. I may run home to Alabama tomorrow. Just, just forget about riding. I'm about tired of riding anyway. Amen. Certainly the Lord has poured Himself out in us and all us and through us tonight. Amen. I believe I'm through. I'm through playing now. Amen. Y'all having me a good time tonight. Yes, Lord. Lord good. Amen. Amen. Well, we 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 are building our vision. Amen. In Alabama. Yes, we are. We've been moving on that thing. God's moving. Amen. I don't know what all he's gonna do, but I know he's already started something. Amen. And we're just going with the flow. We will stay in the flow, move with the flow. Amen? Whichever, however, how much, how long, how deep, how wide, how high. I'm just ready. I'm ready. Aren't you? Amen? Well, you just, you sure can. You know, last night when you were over with us, um, the Lord spoke to me and said that Janice is like Haggai. And the rubble who when they were getting ready to build up and I spoke this this morning in our church when they were getting ready to build up the, the wall with Nehemiah and Ezra and they were getting ready to lay the foundation and they were beginning to do a work and, and, and build up the church of God they had opposition we have opposition they had opposition from where they were coming from from Babylon they had opposition from their own brethren that said, are you kidding? You wanna, you wanna try to build what we came from? We, you wanna try to, to, to work a work, and when we, all we can see is Solomon's temple, and you, you say we wanna do that. We don't even wanna take our willow off the tree. Right. And yet, it was Hecia. Right. It was, it was uh, the rubble. Yeah. It was, it was these prophets that came in and prophesied to them and encouraged them yes. that they were doing what the Lord wanted them to oh, do. Right. And you see, we're building the work. We're putting up the walls. We're laying the foundations. And people around us, people say things. We get into things that, that, that discourage from time to time. And we need mm -hmm. the prophets. We need prophecy. We need encouragement. These are spiritual matters that absolutely do something to us. Build us up. And the Lord told me tonight, He gave me a scripture before we started, and I marked it in my Bible, and He said, Out of Asher is comes fat bread yeah. and royal. See, here's the revelation. Here's the understanding. Through the anointing, through the happy spirit of Asher, out of Asher, you get meal from heaven, meal and food that enables you to go through your yes. desert wall. Yes, it it enables yes. you to go through a 40-day oh, period. It's a meal. When people say there's death all around here, this meal can be put into the situation. It's a fat meal. And it's abundant. Yeah. And it brings life. Yes. And it brings joy. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And it's royal. Yes. It's royalty. It's absolutely from heaven. The skies have opened up tonight. The chariots of heaven have sailed into this place. If you got eyes to see, it enables you to say, I see God. And no matter what situation, no matter what circumstance I am faced with, I see, the yes. Lord. I see the Lord high and lifted up, and his train fills the temple. I don't care. She said, laugh at your infirmity. Laugh at your problem. I don't care what you're going through. You're seeing 
God and not your situation. That's, right. that's the meal. That's the bread. That's royal dainties from heaven that you eat tonight. And it enables you to go to Yes. Yes. Glory to God. Amen. Amen. Lord, let's give the Lord praise tonight. Amen. Who has just blessed y'all in the name of the Lord? It's all yours, brother. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. We're all a giggling because the Lord told us this morning that no longer were we going to eat leftovers and, and from the lower habitation. But as kings, the Lord said he was going to serve us royal days. Amen. And then if you noticed ever since the service begun, and Sister Janet's word and then all that brother Frank said, one scripture after this, what the Lord has said here all day long from the time Chris started teaching this morning, bringing us to that one voice. Not all these echoes, just a voice. In other words, oh, just, I mean, you've got Brother Frank all the way over his way in Brandon, and you think he was running the tape recorder over here listening. Same thing with anybody else. And if I go to their places, it ought to be the same way. That way, because we're not out here echoing. Our parents just repeat what we hear. That's the original sound that comes forth in the sons of God. Now, if you don't have that knowledge of sonship, you probably won't make that same sound because the Bible says in 1 Corinthians 14 that if the trumpet gives an uncertain sound, how should you prepare for that? But we are not speaking. We just talk to man. We're not speaking with just tongues of men. We're speaking with a tongue of the learned. What Isaiah said, the Lord has given me the tongue of the learned that I may speak a word of season unto him that is weary. So the key to everything God does is season. And another key to it is for you to mark the place where the change happens. Must the Lord told us this morning, you don't go seeking change, just accept it, because it's been given to you. And so I think you'd be rather dumb to cross the river tonight and not go back and get 12 stones out of the bottom of it. So that you could bring anything that happened after that that tried to speak contrary to the delivery, you can take it right back to that stone and say, I've already marked this out. I came through death. I came through that Jordan. I came over here. I'm not going back through this again. So you have to determine that from this night on, you're not going to go back through none of the things. There will be no repetitiveness in your life whatsoever. Okay? Get that straight now. That there will be no repetitiveness. You will not be visited again and again and again and again and again by the same people. Pharaoh is dead. The horse and the rider has been drowned into the sea. So you cannot have beatings like this and then get up and live the same stupid way you've been living. You've got to accept, 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 not decline, but accept that there's been a change come forth in this hour for you and for me. Do you know how many plans have been thrown in the fire because when a, when a parroting voice tried to come back bringing up old ways of thinking, it talked them out of the new plans that God ordained? Amen. I'll say this. This is not in disrespect of nothing. This is in and just, just me being humble enough to tell it this way. So I watched the set of plans hang on that shore right there for the better part of 15 years of my life. And they were God-ordained and God-inspired and prophetically uttered. But nobody could see beyond the plans. You had to be able to get a deeper perception of the thing coming to pass. Amen. 
set before you ever leave this building that you are not going to have repetitive thoughts over and over again that rob you of the now things that God has done. You have received the call tonight. You got two buttons, except on one side, and you climb on the other. Quit hitting the red button. Start hitting the green button. Accept this thought that God has thought of you. And once you accept it, refuse. Refuse. You know, you're not going to get very far if you won't talk to yourself. You have to talk to yourself all the time. You have to talk to your mind all the time. When your mind tries to say, uh, you know, tomorrow, well, that driveway is just as empty. Or this, well, well, you have to say, shut up. Yeah, that's right. You will not dictate to me. My promises are yea and amen. God's word gave it to me. His covenant he will not break. And all of the things that's gone forth out of his lips. God used different people in our lives to teach us things by different avenues. Amen. And Norma Hayes most definitely taught us how to stand for what God said we could have without ever giving up. And when you don't ever give up, and you do it over and over again, and you will not change the truth. What does Jonah call it? That scripture? Uh, lying vanities. If you won't observe lying vanities, because if you do, you forsake your own mercy. But if you won't observe the lying vanities, if all you'll observe is the promise in the Word, guess what? You'll walk out everything. And so they say, well, well, hey, you make it happen faster. Well, you do it more, and you do it with more spontaneity. That is, you do it with more enthusiasm, and you do it with more zeal, because that's a sure sign you're believing what you're saying. I mean, you don't get up. And that's not how you do it. You, you, you have to stay with your mouth. You have to have faith, which is boldness, conviction that it will happen. You say, hold oh, no. on, you better move out. You know, you'd be telling kids, get them bikes out of the way, you're in the way of my new car, get them. You know, everything becomes real to you. You start smelling that thing. You start feeling how good it rides. The same way with the house, you go in there, you, you go in there and say, I gotta be looking me up some furniture, I'm fixing to move. I got I'm gonna get what color paint I want. You get serious about something, then it'll happen. I never met an American yet, couldn't get anything that wanted if they got serious enough about it. Never. Never, never, never. Everybody I ever met could lay hold of anything. Then you say, man. All you gotta do is watch people that come the day after Thanksgiving. <laughs> If they'll get up before daylight and go down there and stand in line two o'clock in the morning and then pop anybody in the head that gets in their way, then I guarantee you one thing, they're going to get what they want. Well, it's the same way in God. I'm in line tonight. It's my turn. That's the way you have to think. It's my turn. It's my time. It's my time. It's my time. The Bible says it's high time. Glory to God. You make your mind up that it's mine and don't let any repeats and any echoes of the past any repetitiveness of failure stop you from what you've received tonight. Don't let it block you. Get it in your mind now. It's mine and don't let nothing else talk you out of it. Right. If, you, if you accept it or claim healing tonight, don't let nothing talk you out of it. I don't care if it still looks blue or it still hurts or it still pops and cracks and whatever. I went up the steps, not anymore. Put my sole of my foot down. Said a peel, a peel. God said I was healed. Can you say amen? amen? I went up and prayed for Dad one more thing. He had kidney all so bad for daylight. He was down in that bathroom having the time. But every time he said the word is working in me, he wasn't saying it that pleasant. He was saying it out of pain. Growing it out, but he said the word works. I'm healed in Jesus' name. The truth is I'm healed. The truth yes. is I'm whole. Amen. Walk out anything by what? Claiming the promise, standing firm on only the truth. 